Hi guys, I'm Dave, and welcome to Beer Virtually. So today, it's Saturday here, and uh, it's kind of a lazy Saturday, and we're going to roll through some of the beers. Um, we're going to test all three of these beers back to back. So I looked at them, and I looked at uh, lightest to darkest and lightest to heaviest, and this is the order we're going to go in. We're going to start with the Abita Grapefruit Honey Lager, then go to the Big Easy IPA, then go to the Andy Gator um, Hell is Doppelbach. So uh, these are all these are all just solid craft beers. Abita's been in the game a long time. Um, it's been mainly a southeast beer. I'm not sure if they have much distribution throughout the rest of the country, um, but we've had Abita as a craft beer for as Turbo Dog and some of the other ones for for, for a long time. Um, I've had a couple of these. I had not had the grapefruit honey, so I'm excited to get into that. Um, so that's about it. We're gonna get started with this one, and we'll go from there. See you in just a second. Hi guys, I'm Dave, and this is Beer Virtually. Welcome back. So you saw what the next three reviews were gonna be. So like I said, we're starting with the grapefruit honey log, and. Um, on a beta site, they actually have some pretty cool stuff. They're, they're, they actually have a beer encyclopedia that has a lot of useful beer terms if you're just getting into this kind of thing. And, and some stuff that I'd never even heard of. It's pretty good. Very uh, citrusy, almost sour orange smell right off the bat. So on their site, they had some suggestions for glassware for the different beers. And a flute was a suggestion for this and since I had a flute and we usually just use Pilsner I mean uh, snifter or pint glasses I figured this would be a good chance to use this glass fairly clear beer not too much cloudiness just a little bit ahead They're just a nice uh, golden, it's a nice golden color. A lot of, like I said, a lot of, if you ever driven past a place where they make orange juice and you get that almost sour smell in the air, it's not that sour, but that's, that's the initial scent. Take the first sip. Definitely get that lager taste. For me, when you drink lagers, they almost have, they taste a little bit irony. Almost like you're drinking water from like an old pump. I've mentioned that before in a couple other beers. I'm not getting as much grapefruit and honey as I expected. I expected it to be a little sweeter because of the honey. That being said, this is quite refreshing. Um, this is on the colder side, it's right out of the fridge. So I'm guessing it's in the, uh, you know, 47, 48 degree range. Some flavors may come out a little more if it was slightly warmer, but I don't think a whole bunch. <clears throat> like I mentioned, it's a lager, 4.2% ABV. So fairly easy drinking. I think that's about what Bud Light is. <clears throat> um, IBU's 15. With an IBU that low, I'd expect it to be sweeter. This is very easy drinking. Uh, this was eight ninety nine a six pack. Fair, fair price, I'd say. Nothing. There's nothing really special about this beer. It's uh, it's just a, I'd say a quality beer. I'm not getting any weird flavors or anything like that. Abita also uses an underwater, underground water source for their beer. There's something called uh, tenurite or something like that. It's some isotope, some man-made radioactive isotope 
that's on every surface of water that's exposed to the air. And since they use a protected underground source, none of that is present in their beer, which I guess is, is kind of says something. I'm not sure if I have the story completely right, but the story behind Abita is that there was a high school kid, I believe he was, and he was brewing beer in his room. Or, you know, he was aging it in his room, kind of brewing it on the sly. And his dad found the beer and took it away. Well, his dad tasted it, and it was good. So they went into business together and started brewing beer, and I believe he was right out of high school, if I'm not mistaken. I should look that up and, and get back with you on this. But this is very easy drinking. Um, uh, this would go good with like a brunch or something like that, and maybe some breakfast foods because of the slight citrus flavors. And definitely citrus smells. I mean, I think you could drink this in, alongside like a Belgian waffle or some pancakes even. It's almost, it's, it's almost kind of breakfast, it's light enough to be almost kind of a breakfast beer. And this is one of the, uh, we've done a, a rash of dark beers, which we have some more dark beers coming. <clears throat> but um, th these next three beers are, are all on the light side, uh, SRM wise anyway. This one is light on the ABV side also. Pretty cool bottle, um, hand-drawn grapefruits with a, uh, a bottle of honey on the side there. On the back it says, uh, grapefruit honey, ripe juicy Louisiana red grapefruits are paired with the sweetness of locally sourced honey to create a refreshing brew with a citrus aroma and clean malt taste. Brewed with pilsner and wheat malts, the bite of grapefruit is balanced by the sweet honey. All of our har Harvest Series brews are made with the finest Louisiana-grown ingredients. Yes, this is one of the, um, this is in the Harvest Series. I believe there's four or five beers in the Harvest Series. <clears throat> this is uh, brewed and bottled in Abita Springs, Louisiana. Cool bottle. It's got their, their, uh, their, their name stamped in the glass. Or cast in the glass, I should say. It's pretty good. N n nothing special though. That was good. I'm gonna rate this beer a three and a half. Nothing, nothing special enough to give it more than a three and a half, but it's quality enough to give it a three and a half. So, see you on the next beer, which is the Big Easy IPA. Until then, cheers.